Welcome to the most straightforward guide on how to tank as a rogue in Season of Discovery. In this guide, we're going to go over gear, talents, runes, rotation, all of that, including some general things to keep in mind when tanking dungeons. First off, let's talk about runes. Pretty self-explanatory. You probably already know which ones we're using, but for the chest, we're using just a flesh wound, as this gives us a 20% physical damage reduction while Blade Dance is active. Additionally, you have a 6% reduced chance to be critically hit by attacks, and the threat generation is massively increased. In the leg slot, we are, of course, using Blade Dance for just a flesh wound. And in the hands, we are using Main Gauche. Now, Main Gauche instantly strikes. It does have a bit of a cooldown. It has a 20-second cooldown, but it gives you a 10% parry for 10 seconds. It only costs 30 energy, and it gives you a combo point. Should also be noted with threat generation, if you have your epic crafted gloves, this will also give you 10% attack speed and increase the threat you generate for 10 seconds. So it's awesome for rogue tanks. We're not going to go through all of the gear that I'm using, but there are some notable pieces off the final boss in BFD off Akumai. You can get the vampiric boot knife, which has a chance on hit of leeching health from your victim, giving you plus 10 every time it does proc. We also have the Naga Lady in the main hand. This is a really nice sword. does have to go in the main hand, though. And then in the head, this is another notable piece. It is the best rogue tanking piece right now. It is the final boss of BFD, the Sturdy Hood. It gives 15 stam and a crap ton of armor. All right, and here's the talent tree that we went with. We are 0, 16, 0. We have 2 in Sinister Strike. We have 5 in the Dodge. Five in Deflection, of course we did grab Repost. We have two in Endurance, and we also have one in Improved Sprint, mainly just for the 50% chance to remove any impairing effects that could really hurt us when we're trying to tank a dungeon. Let's talk about how you should initiate a pull on a trash pack. Now remember, your basic moves are generating a lot of threat, and based on our talents, our Sinister Strike has a 10 energy cost reduction. So let's say we're pulling a pack of three. I'm going to run in, I'm going to Sinister Strike the first two, and then use my Main Gauche on the third. Now why don't I open with Main Gauche on the first? It's because it only gives you the 10% parry for 10 seconds, so I want to maximize that. I'm going to gather threat on the first two, and then focus on the third, Main Gauching, when I have all three of them on me at one time. Depending on the specific encounter and who your DPS is, the chances are your DPS is not going to be doing target of target, and they're going to be pulling aggro off of the other mobs. That's where we have our taunts, so our feint becomes a taunt. We can quickly tab over and taunt our target if they're in our range. We may have to chase them if they're going after our mage, because the range isn't that great on our taunt, and that's something I'd love to see Blizzard improve. I'd like to at least have 10, 15 yards available on my taunt because mages and warlocks are just pumping right now. Other than that, I'm going to try and build at least three combo points on my main target. If you switch targets at any time, you lose all of the combo points that you've generated. And remember, our blade dance uptime is going to be very, very important. Much like with our backstab build where we want to keep slice and dice uptime to a maximum as a tank, we want to swap that out for blade dance. Remember, whenever blade dance is active, we're actually acquiring that buff from just a flesh wound. We're taking the 6% chance or crit chance reduction on us, and we're also taking 20% less physical damage. Remember though, if you switch targets, you lose your combo points, try and get at least three combo points in your target using a thistle t if you have to say it's a big pack and your dps is really pulling aggro you may want to grab as much as you can pop a thistle t get full energy and then go hard just to make sure that you maintain that now if we have a pack of four or five and we're getting hit very very hard we also have evasion in our back pocket which increases our dodge chance by 50 percent for a short time. Now if we have main gauche, blade dance with just a flesh wound and evasion up, we're going to be taking practically zero damage for at least 10 seconds. 
Let's quickly talk about the usefulness and resourcefulness of having repost, and then we'll go into how to handle boss encounters. Much with trying to maintain our aggro, repost is a low energy, high hitting, disarming move that we can use to quickly grab aggro and reduce the damage to our DPS until we grab aggro from a mob that has strayed from the pack. You may notice throughout this run that I'm not running Tiny Threat, and that's something that a lot of tanks will be running to maintain their threat. Instead, I have the bars above their head, my nameplates, actually with LVUI showing my threat. So you may see that a bar is completely translucent, it may go yellow, and then it may fade completely. That's when I am maintaining, in the process of losing, and have lost aggro on my target. So that's an easy explanation of why I'm not using Tiny Threat and one of the benefits or bonuses of having LVUI. Just throwing it out there, if any of you want a full tutorial on how I set up my UI and how to actually download and install LVUI, since you can't get it on CurseForge and Overwolf, let me know in the comments down below and I'll happily make that video. When it comes to boss encounters, it's extremely straightforward. You're not worried about losing aggro because your DPS isn't doing target of target and they're pulling everything everywhere all of the time. You really just have to focus on the one-on-one. -on -one. There are some encounters where the boss will have a couple of mobs, Van Cleef, and even through the stockades, but maintaining aggro on one target is very, very easy for a rogue. At this point, you're just watching for those disarms with repost because a lot of bosses are just going to be a tank and spank melee damage on you. Keeping them disarmed really reduces a ton of their damage. Other than that, it's just blade dance uptime. It's extremely straightforward, and if you lose aggro for some reason, which would be really weird as a rogue tank, you can just taunt them right back. So boss encounters are extremely easy. Just focus on keeping up your blade dance, keeping the enemy disarmed, and making sure you have your taunt up just in case someone pulls aggro. All in all, rogue tanking has been extremely fun. I've never really been a tank throughout retail, even back in vanilla, playing hardcore, definitely not in hardcore. But this has been a whole new experience for me, and going into it as a rogue has been so much fun. Now, what do I feel is more fun? Well, definitely the backstab build, just pumping and topping the charts, beating all those hunter bots is intensely fun. That's, that's more fun, and that's the heart of rogue. Going into PvP, especially as phase two is going to be coming probably in a month, I, I would say probably about a month, end of January-ish, beginning of February, we get the level cap raised to 40, which means our toolkit expands dramatically. Honestly, we're going to we're going to dominate PVP definitely in the level cap 40 season. I'm just so excited to be playing Rogue right now, but let me know if you have any other questions about Rogue tanking down in the comments. I'll try to be as attentive as possible to them. Make sure to subscribe, like the video, and check out one of the two videos on your screen now if you want to learn about some more cool and unique things that we can do in Season of Discovery. And I'm not talking just as a rogue, I have rune guides and so much more for all of Season of Discovery.